Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. At the beginning of the Eocene period, roughly 56 million years ago, a number of hoofed mammal groups emerged that would have seemed relatively familiar to us today. In contrast to the earliest ungulates that thrived during the Paleocene, which tended to be quite unspecialised, Eocene forms became more highly adapted for browsing lifestyles in the tropical forests that covered the northern continents at the time. While both basal artiodactyls and perissodactyls were commonplace, the former tended to be either omnivorous, carnivorous, or small chevrotain like animals. The odd toed perissodactyls, on the other hand, appear to have developed stricter herbivory at an early stage in their evolution, lacking any predatory forms comparable to the mesonychids or the bear like arctocyonids. The most basal known perissodactyls are animals such as the phenacodontids which first appeared during the Paleocene in North America approximately 61 million years ago. Equipped with long, low skulls, heavy tails and five-toed feet, phenacodontids would not have closely resembled modern horses, rhinos and tapirs if we were to observe them in life. However, several important perissodactyl traits were present in the group, such as specialised shearing molars, elongated limbs and the reduction of the first and fifth toes. Early forms were small animals, no bigger than a domestic cat, although the group grew larger as time passed. The genus Meniscotherium from Eocene North America was about the size of a small dog, weighing up to 17 kilograms or 37 pounds, and who appears to have lived in social groups. The largest member of the family was the incredibly successful genus Phenocodus, which was comparable to a sheep in terms of size. Known from 11 species that range from the late Paleocene to the Middle Eocene, this animal possessed hoof digits and a subsequent cursorial lifestyle, while also retaining basal traits such as a long heavy tail and prominent canines, most likely used for intraspecific combat. Phenacoda supported its weight on enlarged middle digits, aided by the toes on either side, forming the typical odd-toed foot structure that would be inherited by all more derived perissodactyls. Ancestral forms such as these would give rise to the more familiar modern clades of Taparoidea, Rhinoceratoidea, and, most importantly for this video, the Hippomorphs. This is the group to which horses belong, although during the Eocene this clade was far more diverse, coming in all shapes and sizes. Recent studies have shown that the Hyopsodontids, also known as the tube sheep, were basal members of Hippomorpha due to the structure of their inner ears being very similar to those of early horses. Iopsodontids were generally small animals and were very unspecialised in both appearance and lifestyle, probably resembling the common ancestors of all Perissodactyls. They would not have resembled their closest modern relatives at all, appearing more similar to civets, hyraxes or large rats, with some genera such as the European Pachytherium being capable climbers. The most well-known member of this family was the abundant Hyopsodus, which was native to Eurasia and North America during the Eocene. Remains of this animal comprise up to 30% of fossil remains at some North American sites, indicating that Hyopsodus was very common in such ecosystems. Many different species of this genus have been discovered, ranging from rat to cat-sized, although most remains consist of teeth and isolated jawbones. With an elongated but arched spine, Hyopsodus would have resembled a modern hyrax or guinea pig, and, like these animals, was largely terrestrial, scampering about on the forest floor. Its teeth suggested it was a generalist omnivore, probably mainly eating a mixture of vegetation, fruits, seeds, insects, and the occasional smaller animal. And while its limbs were proportionally short, it was likely still quite an agile, fast-moving animal. It also appears to have had some ability to dig, and may have sheltered in burrows similar to modern groundhogs. Specialised features of the skull also suggest that Hyopsodus possessed a rudimentary form of echolocation, similar to modern shrews, which would have helped it find its way in dark and cluttered environments. All later hippomorphs probably evolved from forms similar to this, which became increasingly adapted to herbivory and terrestrial habits. By the beginning of the Eocene, more derived hippomorphs began to diversify. Developing from forest-dwelling ancestors the size of small dogs, several families emerged by around 56 million years ago. These included the first horses in the family Equidae, which include the famous genus Eohippus, the closely related Paleotheriids, and the earliest of the robust Brontotheres. The latter family, also known as the Thunder Beasts, 
would later develop into massive, superficially rhino-like animals with prominent bony horns, although the most basal forms would have seemed very similar to early horses. A good example would be the genus Eotitanops from the early Eocene of North America and Asia. Standing about one and a half feet tall at the shoulder and resembling a trunkless tapir, this animal lacked the trademark horns of its later relatives. Its teeth were low-crowned, being adapted for feeding on leaves and soft vegetation. The similarly basal Lambdotherium was even smaller, being about the size of a Scottish terrier, and would have lived somewhat like a chevrotain or forest antelope. The more derived Paleosiops was an even more tapir-like animal, being comparable in size to a modern domestic cow. Still lacking horns, this genus was nonetheless bulky and heavily built, weighing up to 800 kilograms or roughly 1,760 pounds. Typical of most basal brontotheres, Paleosiops possessed enlarged canine teeth, which would have been utilised for defence against predators and in intraspecific competition. Some Middle Eocene brontotheres, such as the genus Sphenocelus, developed greatly elongated skulls, which suggests a selective browsing ecological niche. When compared to their close perissodactyl relatives, the brontotheres were often substantially larger than the early horses, rhinos and tapirs that lived alongside them. Indeed, the thunder beasts inhabited niches taken in modern times by rhinos, tapirs and elephants, while the ancestors of these animals were still relatively small during the Eocene. The most derived brontotheres were all massive animals, being among the largest terrestrial animals on Earth during the second half of the Eocene. They tended to resemble modern rhinos in appearance, although their nasal horns were formed from bone instead of keratin. Males tended to possess larger horns than the females, suggesting that these animals were social and gregarious, with adults competing for females in ritualised combat. An exception to this rule was the genus Embolotherium, which was native to Mongolia during the late Eocene. Standing roughly 8 feet tall at the shoulder and weighing in at 2.8 tonnes, this huge beast had a wedge-shaped bony protuberance at the nose that was the same size in both males and females. The wedge was hollow and connected to the nasal passages, which suggests that the structure was used for species recognition or as a resonating chamber. The largest of all brontotheres was a North American genus Megacerops, which is known from multiple well-preserved specimens recovered from the Great Plains region of the United States. Although superficially resembling a modern rhino, this animal was substantially larger, being comparable to an African forest elephant in terms of size. Standing 8 feet 2 inches tall at the shoulder and weighing up to 3.8 tons, Megacerops would have been the most massive animal in its environment. All of the species had a pair of blunt horns on the snout, the size varying between the species with the horns of males being much larger than those of females. This could indicate that they were social animals which butted heads for breeding privileges. The skeleton of an adult male was found with partially healed rib fractures, which supports the theory that males used their horns to fight each other. No other creature living in Megacerops' time and environment, except another Megacerops, could have inflicted such an injury. The adults may have also used their horns to defend themselves and their calves from predators, such as hyenodonts, entelodonts, bathornis, or nimravids. The shape of its teeth suggested it preferred food such as soft stems and leaves, rather than tough vegetation. It may also have had fleshy lips and a long tongue for carefully selecting food. Despite their success during the Eocene, brontotheres became rapidly extinct at the end of the period, approximately 34 million years ago. This was probably due to being unable to adapt to the drier and more open environments that developed during the latest Eocene. All brontotheres were adapted to feeding on soft leaves and vegetation, and were probably not able to handle tougher plant material, particularly grasses. In addition, the Eocene Oligocene transition led to the reduction of tropical and subtropical forests across the northern hemisphere to be replaced by more open savanna woodland, reducing the amount of suitable foodstuffs for these massive animals. In contrast, the previously modest horses and rhinos thrived during the Oligocene, with the latter moving into the niches vacated by the brontotheres, even producing far larger herbivores in the form of Paraceratherium and relatives. Ironically, horses and rhinos themselves would decline during the Pliocene and Pleistocene, but that is a story best left for another time. Thanks for watching, everyone. The next episode will be covering the Parareptiles. So until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.